The opening scene features an ex-CIA operative, Frank, who is trying to live a normal life with his girlfriend, Sarah. One day, while shopping for some groceries, Frank is approached by his former colleague and best friend, Marvin, who expresses his concern that the enemies are still after them. Frank doesn't believe in this, so he calms his friend down, assuring him that they're safe. But, as Marvin drives away, his car explodes, proving that his assumptions were correct. Fat load of good it did him. Despite witnessing the incident with his own eyes, Frank doesn't believe that his friend is dead, as he used to carry out such pranks often. But Marvin used to bowl himself up all the time. It's just a TikTok trend. Regardless, Sarah convinces him to attend Marvin's funeral and to deliver a tearful eulogy. After the funeral, a group of government agents approach Frank and take him to an FBI Yankee White facility, asserting that he has been flagged as retired, extremely dangerous, or red. I thought it stood for rampant erect dysfunction. During the interrogation, the facility is suddenly ambushed by a corrupt agent, Jack Horton, and his team of private military contractors. Jack then comes face to face with Frank and issues a threatening offer. Give him the information he needs, or else he'll fillet Sarah from head to toe with no mercy. However, Frank isn't ready to risk his girl's life, so he decides to come back to his zone as a professional fighter. Despite being handcuffed, he skillfully fights the military contractors, taking them down one one after another. At one point, he's almost shot by an assailant, but Marvin comes to his rescue, revealing that he's still alive, and his most recent prank went totally viral on TikTok. They then leave a grenade in the facility before making their way out. In the aftermath, the two friends go on the run with Sarah. On their way, Marvin explains that he and Frank are being hunted down because they've been listed as participants in a secret operation codenamed Nightshade. Turns out that this operation was conducted during the Cold War era in order to smuggle a nuclear weapon into Russia. Piece by piece, amidst their conversation, they hear some sounds coming from the car truck, after which Marvin reveals that he has been keeping the senior director of military intelligence for a couple of days. Meanwhile, Jack goes to the Pentagon to report the incident to the Army General. Here, we learn that Jack is an independent assassin contractor who has been hired by the U.S. government to get information on Operation Nightshade from Frank. But, now that he failed, the general intends to publicize the matter. Jack Jack, who is against the idea, attacks the general and kills him. He then talks to another senior corrupt official and suggests that they hire a top contract killer, Han Cho Bai, to kill Frank. In addition, Jack also convinces the international agencies that Frank and his associates are terrorists on the run. When the news flows to Secret Intelligence Service, or MI6, Director Phillips immediately goes to meet another contract killer, Victoria. He offers her a huge sum of money to kill the fugitives, being an old ally. Victoria calls Frank to notify him about her new contract, as well as about Han. On the other hand, Frank, Marvin, and Sarah gather intel from the abducted head of military intelligence. They discover that a physicist named Dr. Edward Bailey concealed the smuggled nuclear weapon in Moscow for future use. Frank and Marvin then recall that they were part of the security detail, protecting Edward. But the latter was killed in a car blast, and he doesn't even have TikTok. Since then, the nuke's exact location has been lost. Later on, the trio search the internet and stumble upon a man named The Frog, who seems to be exposing Frank's and Marvin's role in Nightshade. In the next scene, Han lands in New Jersey to track Frank down, but by the time he goes to analyze the weapon for the mission, Frank, Marvin, and Sarah cleverly steal his private plane and fly to Paris in order to apprehend The Frog. Upon arriving there, they are met by a Russian counterintelligence Katya Petrokovich, who is also investigating Nightshade. It appears that Frank had a romantic relationship relationship with her in the past, which is evident when she kisses him in front of Sarah, making her jealous. Following this, Katya teams up with them to find the frog. The next day, they manage to locate him in a bar. Before entering, Frank strictly instructs his girlfriend not to look their target in the eye, but the mischievous Sarah does the same. As a result, the frog senses the danger and opens fire. Before fleeing the scene, Frank then asks Marvin to take Sarah somewhere safe while he decides to chase the frog with Katya. However, Sarah, who enthusiastically wants to participate in the mission, chases the target in another car, disregarding her boyfriend's instruction. After a long chase through the streets of Paris, Frank and Katya are finally able to catch the frog and bring him back to his house, which surprisingly isn't a lily pad shape. They then resort to torturing him to make him reveal the information they need, but Sarah intervenes. In an attempt to one-up Katya, she kisses the frog and seduces him, successfully convincing him to reveal everything he knows. The 
frog then hands them a key to his security box. He knows he was played, but he thought it was worth it. Later that evening, Katya summons Frank for a private meeting, pretending that something urgent has come up. Despite Marvin's warning, Frank agrees to go, assuring that he'll handle everything. However, the situation takes a different turn as Katya takes him to a restaurant and drugs him before retrieving the key from his pocket. The next morning, Marvin and Sarah bring the unconscious Frank back to their hotel room and wake his old ass up. Sarah is clearly mad at him for his recklessness, but Marvin asserts that things are still under control. He reveals that he had anticipated Katya's double cross, due to which he planted a fake key on Frank. Later that day, the three of them head to Credit Lyonese Bank and access the Frog's security deposit box. Inside, they find documents pointing to Edward as the creator of the Nightshade Bomb. Moreover, they learn that the physicist is still alive and that he's been held in a maximum security mental asylum in England for 32 years. With this information in hand, the trio sets off to meet Edward. On their way, they are ambushed by Victoria. Frank wonders how she found them, to which Marvin discloses that he was the one to alert her. Surprisingly, Victoria turns out to be on their side, which is evident when she helps them fake their deaths by blowing up their vehicle and buying them some more time. After this, she joins the forces and helps them infiltrate the highly secured asylum. As a part of their plan, Victoria feigns insanity and creates chaos, distracting the guards in the asylum. Frank uses this opportunity to sneak into the asylum via a window, while Marvin and Sarah wait out. Not long after, Victoria and Frank subdue several staff members and disguise themselves as doctors before making their way to Edward's cell. Upon entering the cell, they find the hyperactive Edward, who is incapacitated by mind-fogging drugs. They try asking for the location of the nightshade nuclear bomb, but the old man doesn't respond to any of their questions. Shortly after, the asylum guards learn about the breach, prompting them to rush to Edward's cell. Sensing the urgency, Frank flees with Edward, while Victoria stays behind to buy them some time. In the next scene, Frank and his team decide to take Edward to their safe house in Moscow. They successfully land there, but before they make it to their destination, they are ambushed by Han. The commotion alerts the local police officers, who then intervene to handle the situation as they hold Han at gunpoint. Frank and his team depart from the scene, leaving the assailant to deal with the authorities. Han then vents his anger on the cops, taking them down, one after another. On the other hand, Victoria is captured and brought to MI6 headquarters. There, she is confronted by Director Phillips, who decides to sentence her to life for her betrayal. But as soon as he leaves, she skillfully manages to uncuff herself and subdue a guard before fleeing the scene. Afterwards, Frank's group arrives at Marvin's safe house that has been untouched for years. Sometime later, Edward detoxes and remembers the exact location where he hid the bomb. The Kremlin, a heavy fortified complex in the center of Moscow. Wasting no time, the group head towards it and infiltrate the building through a secret underground passage. They make it to the changing room, where they disguise themselves as Russian army officers. Edward then leads Frank and Marvin to the bomb's location, while Sarah guards the door from where they broke in. Not long after, the trio locates the suitcase bomb, powered by undetectable red mercury. But, as they are about to leave, they are confronted by Katya, who is following higher orders. Katya, she says. Frank reasons that the bomb is too powerful to be possessed by any nation, and that it must be destroyed. He eventually manages to persuade his former lover to switch sides and join them, with nothing but the power of his senile Riz. Following this, they exit the place before the Russian army can reach them. Back at Marvin's hideout, the group are celebrating their success. When Frank receives a call from Victoria, she reveals that Edward was locked up specifically because he wanted to detonate the bomb in Moscow. Before Frank can react to the news, the anti-communist Edward holds him at gunpoint. He confirms Victoria's message, also admitting that he was the one who leaked word of Project Nightshade and made a deal with Jack to acquire the bomb. Moments later, Jack shows up at the scene and thanks Edward for helping him out. The old man then shoots Katya and stages her death at Frank's hands before leaving him with the bomb. Just when it seems the bad guys have won, another twist arises. While boarding the plane, Jack betrays Edward, intending to imprison and torture him until he discloses all of his secrets. After this, the old man is handcuffed and locked inside a small cage inside the airplane. But midway through the flight, the smart Edward manages to uncuff himself. Everyone in this movie needs to get better cuffs and retrieves some tiny bottles of nerve agent from his shoe. He then administers himself with its antidote before releasing the chemical in the vicinity, killing everyone on board except for Jack. Meanwhile, Frank
Frank, Marvin, and Sarah are apprehended by the Russian soldiers, who prepare to execute them for killing Katya. Fortunately, they're rescued by Victoria, who appears to have taken a sniper position at a distance. She effortlessly shoots all of the Russian soldiers, while her boyfriend sits beside her, praising her bold attitude. After neutralizing the threat, Victoria's boyfriend informs the group about the plane's emergency landing and Edward's departure to the Iranian embassy in London. Hearing this, the group decides to fly to London in search of Edward. But before they can get onto the plane, they are ambushed by Han once again. Following this, a fierce duel ensues between Frank and Han, both of them appearing to be equally formidable. At one point, Frank manages to hold him at gunpoint, demanding that he listen to him. He then seeks Han's help in his mission, citing that 11 million people will lose their lives if they don't stop Edward from detonating the bomb. Frank even passes the gun to him in order to win his trust. This gesture finally convinces Han, who agrees to help, although he vows to settle the score after the mission. Here, it's revealed that the two are former friends, who later turned into enemies after Frank betrayed him. Now, the group of five sets off on their mission to reclaim the bomb. As the first part of their plan, Sarah seduces the Iranian ambassador and takes him hostage. Next, Marvin poses as a potential defector, managing to gain entry into the embassy. He then blows the water system up the building, causing a huge leak. This allows the rest of the team members to enter the embassy, disguised as plumbers. Following this, Sarah manages to retrieve a key to a large safe, where Edward is suspected to be hiding. True to their assumption, Edward is inside the safe where he has captured Jack. The old man triggers the time of the nightshade bomb, while revealing that he wants revenge upon the entire espionage community for their roles in locking him up and apparently killing his family. A short while later, Sarah manages to retrieve a key to the safe and hand it to Frank. They then enter the safe, only to discover the lifeless bodies of Jack and some guards. Soon after, the embassy guards discover the breach, and as a result, they open fire towards Frank's team amidst the gunfire. Edward takes Sarah hostage and flees towards the airport to escape the imminent explosion. Han and Victoria go after them in their car, while Frank and Marvin steal an embassy helicopter. During the flight, Marvin attempts to disarm the bomb by cutting the wires, which causes the timer to count down even faster. Adding up to their challenge, they are pursued by the armed embassy guards, who open fire towards the group. As a consequence, the helicopter loses its control and plummets, crashing to the ground. The best friends manage to survive with some minor injuries, but the bomb is still ticking. Following this, the duo hijacks a random vehicle and rushes towards the airport. In the next scene, Edward boards Han's plane, but he's soon confronted by Frank with the suitcase bomb in his hand. Edward holds him at gunpoint and forces him to get off the plane with his girlfriend, as well as the bomb. Frank complies, allowing the the old man to fly off. Just then, Han and Victoria arrive at the scene and notice that the suitcase is still in Frank's hand. This makes them lose all hope of survival, and they wait for their imminent death. But, as the timer goes off, the plane explodes in the air, ultimately killing their target. Here, it's revealed that Frank had managed to take out the bomb from the suitcase and hide it in the plane before confronting Edward earlier. Everyone is happy, except for Han, who angrily demands $30 million for his plane and an additional $20 million for not killing Frank. The movie ends with Sarah, who is seen enjoying herself on her next mission in Caracas with Frank and Marvin. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.